brings us to the last of our election interviews with the main party leaders. I'm joined by um, Fishuk Charles Jay Hahi. You're welcome, Fishuk. Thank you. Uh, we'll get back to what you had to say today about Fine Gael and how you'd not cooperate. And uh, I know you dismiss what Adam Jukes is saying. So could I ask you this? Do you dismiss what the opinion polls seem to be saying that your dream of a, of a majority, a dull majority, may be slipping away? No, I don't read it that at all. In fact, I'm very happy with the poll this morning, and I'm quite satisfied with it. Uh, yesterday, in one poll, we were 45 percent. Uh, this morning, we're 47 percent. So that seems to be moving in the right direction. 47 percent would certainly give us the working majority we're looking for. Right, you do. You do. You, presumably, you also accept. I, I must accept myself that the posters are seemingly saying that it's either you with the majority or a minority. However, there is another consideration then for people that arises: should you be given? And that is something that uh, is on the doorsteps. Can people trust? Charlie Hoyle with the majority. Do you accept that's, a, that's, that's an issue? Uh, well, I, su I suppose uh, in, in political life, if, if people keep saying things often enough and throwing enough uh, mud, some of it will stick. But I don't think it's a real issue. <coughs> I mean, the, the normal natural system of a parliamentary democracy is for a government to have a majority. Now, in Britain, for instance, you have a, one party has a majority, and sometimes in here and elsewhere, a coalition has a majority. But the whole purpose, the basis of operation of a democratic system is a government with a majority implementing its plans. So there's nothing, uh, nothing detrimental or wrong about looking for a majority. Yeah, but again, let's face it, what we're talking about here is the so-called Hahi factor. Many people in the streets do say to me, if I discuss it with them, look, we worry about him being arrogant and autocratic and that he's uh, uh, obsessed with power and so yeah, on. I, I mean, do you accept that that is something that's in people's minds? Well, I, I hope to stop too prominent in people's minds or in many people's minds, but let, let me give a few uh, replies to it, if I may. First of all, uh, when we came into government this time, uh, the first thing we did was call in all the social partners, the trade unions, the farmers and the employers. And we sat down around the table with them and hammered out in discussion and negotiation a program for national recovery. Now, we all agreed to that and then we set about implementing it. Now, surely that's not the attitude of an, out an autocratic government. Right. Now, let, let me you were in a minority then, so, 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 that's, the pro the, the, that's the problem, Tish, if you were in a minority. But surely it shows an approach to government government by consensus. Fianna Fáil have always argued that we want to work and work out our economic problems in cooperation with the social partners. That's always been our philosophy. Let me, let me make another point, if I may. Uh, when I went out of office uh, in 1981, June 81, uh, I distinctly remember making a speech, uh, and I welcomed the new government, and I wished them well, and I promised them a constructive opposition. Now, the, I actually was applauded by the whole doll for that speech. I think that's not the action of an autocratic, arrogant person well, can who's I bring power you man. Back, but Fisher, it was just after a period, first of all, when you did have a majority. Yes. When you went in to, on television here and told the nation that with that majority that you had figured out what the problem was, you appreciate the difficulty, you do something about it. And I think it's fair to say, Fisher, that you didn't. Well, that uh, was when you had a majority, you were open to pressures. It's when you, in the last two and a half years, weren't, w were constrained that you acted. They have opened to an awful lot of pressure in the last two and a half years. The last two and a half years have been the most pressurized period I've ever been in government. But to go back to that uh, 79 uh, period, uh, in fact, uh, in, the 1980 budget, in the 1980 budget, which followed my assuming office and followed that statement, we actually reduced the current budget deficit very considerably. Now, it's easy now, uh, with hindsight, to say what should or should not have been done. But the position was thrown completely off course, and the whole course of events was distorted by the oil crisis of that time, if you remember. So it wasn't possible uh, to plan uh, the sort of economy, economic development and the sort of economic program that we would have wanted to do. The whole situation was overshadowed by that enormous hike in the price of oil and petrol. Well, Tishuk, you said just a few days ago, you didn't appreciate the extent of public anger, public frustration on a central issue, the, the, the health cuts. Now, isn't that uh, a rather limp excuse? Uh, and a Taoiseach, a former minister for, for, for health, saying, I just didn't know. I oh, know. Now, hold on a minute. Now, what I did say was that it was only when the election declared, declared that I became aware of the full extent of people's frustration with the whole waiting list situation in particular. Now, I want to make the point that nobody else realised that either. Let, let me look at Fine Gael and the PD, but particularly Fine Gael now, who have been very vociferous about this and condemning me for saying that I didn't know. They didn't know. They couldn't have known. On no occasion in the last doll, over the last year, two years, did they ever once propose in the doll that we should spend one extra penny on the health services. In fact, they fully accepted 
uh, the estimates that we put forward, and it was only when the election was declared and this uh, wave of, of uh, feeling about health services, and particularly waiting lists, it was only then that Fine Gael and all the other parties discovered the enormity of the feeling out there. Fair enough. What Fine Gael did do was provide uh, the TALA strategy, the consensus, but what you said but this evening... Services. But all right, I'm, going, I'm moving on to something else, oh, T-shirt. What you did say this evening was that you'd have no post-election deal with Fine Gael, even if you failed to get a majority. Now, that would appear to be ruling out any resumption of uh, the consensus, the TALA strategy, no, no. if you're in a minority. No, no. First of all, as I say, I don't contemplate being in a minority. That's my position. I'm going for asking the people to give us a reasonable working majority so that we can implement the right sort of policies and in particular so that we can put into operation our plan for national and development. You don't get it. But uh, on the last occasion we didn't enter into any agreement or arrangement with anybody. When we came in we were a, we were a minority, we had only 81 seats the last time. We went into the Dáil, uh, sought my election as T-shirt, sought to become a government with no deals, arrangements or agreements made with anybody. And, as it turned out, uh, we, we, we put ourselves forward and we were elected and then we proceeded to implement our policies without fear or fear. Yeah, but this, this time, time it's, it's rather different. You'd have failed for the fifth time to get your majority. Fine Gael and the PDs yeah. would have to, for their supporters, press some of their joint programme. They'd say, look, at, uh, we want something on the health, 60 million, 13 million, we want something on our tax proposals. And you'd say, no, I'm not interested. But aren't, we then heading, aren't we then heading in? inevitably, because of the pressure that will be on them, well, it, into, into another election. Yeah, or is that what you're saying? What you're really arguing for, therefore, is a majority for Fianna Fáil. Well, so that's, that's, that's sort of impossible situation. Yeah, right. Right. Is that what you're up to, Tisha, <coughs> if I may say? So no, are you trying to panic the, the, oh, the middle no, classes? No, no, no. Is it a kind of a bluff? No, it's a perfectly legitimate political exercise to look for a reasonable working majority in every party going into a general election, unless it's a very small fringe party, seeks a majority. The PDs in Fine Gael are seeking a majority. You're not making any accusations about them. We believe that the normal, natural way to run a parliamentary democracy that's uh, adhered to in every country in the world is for the government of the day to have a working majority. That's all we're looking for. Now, if, and I don't believe it's going to happen, but if, uh, if uh, the, uh, any other sort of situation evolves, then we will uh, accept it uh, and make the best of it in the best interest of the people in the country. We've only time for one very brief question. If you do get your majority, will you move, I get will, will, will you move to revise the constituency? You'll then be in a situation to ram the Porrick Flynn formula through the House. Will you do that? That will not happen, no. Uh, what we did on the last occasion, uh, we set up an independent commission uh, with Judge Hamilton as chairman. He made a report. He made a full report. We accepted that report in detail. And we're prepared by the opposition. And they will not accept it the next if time around. If they won't accept a report from an independent uh, commission presided over by a judge, what, what, what can we do? Uh, anyway, we haven't taken any decision about the constituencies in the new dawn. Uh, we will approach that, and I promise that we will be absolutely fair and legitimate and above board. It will certainly be in an independent commission uh, and we will accept whatever an independent commission reports. Tisha, we've run out of time. Thank you very much Thank for talking with us.